okay what what men like bow exist oh my god oh my god who my god he is the sweetest nicest most he's he's such a gentleman oh my god i didn't know no boys could be animated like this black boys to be precise like people like this do not exist in the real world where can i order my copy of bow i want 200 bow is just he's just he's going to end up being gay isn't he What is with cartoons in the fall season driving me nuts? First Hilda, then Castlevania, and now She-Ra. No, I'm not including the Dragon Prince. In fact, I might make a video detailing why She-Ra did so many things better than the Dragon Prince. But for now, let's review. Let me review. Let me just get my initial thoughts out there. O M G. I was avoiding this cartoon like the plague. I did not ever want to watch it. I was seeing stuff on Twitter about, oh my god, Shira no longer looks like she used to do. And I saw the old version of Shira looked more mature with more voluptuous. And then there were other tweets about Glimmer being fat and having the power of wind or something like that. Like there were so many arguments going on online about this show. And I just did not want to get into that because I never grew, grew up on Shiva or Hira because that's mostly an American thing. Those shows were never broadcasted here. The, sh those th the shows that were broadcasted when my parents were kids were um, Penelope, The Perils of Penelope Pit Stop, Waikiki Races, Flintstone, Jetsons, Top, Top Cat. My mom really likes that one. So no Hira Shira so when I saw that it was gonna be renewed and they changed the design I was thinking okay this is gonna be another reboot where the original was just scraped even though I have no ties to the original and when I saw the new Shira a lot of people are saying she's flat she's this others are saying well she's a kid so I already had a perception from the negative side of people saying they don't like the new Shira but I still watched the trailer and the trailer looked hella good omg but again when the show came out there was just a lot of confusion and negativity so i just did not want to get into that but um my close friend divi was just gushing about how good the show was on twitter and i was like you know what if divi likes it why am i saying divi if devi sorry jay likes to pronounce it differently and i think he started rubbing off on me so devi was so excited for the show just kept gushing about it and i'm like okay he has not led me astray so far he does love the dragon prince and for what it's worth the dragon prince's story is good just not as good as everyone has been hyping it up to be but that's a different story so this show like i said on twitter the first five seconds already got me hooked the title coming in the whole steampunky type of the light filling in to form the shira um thing i don't even know how to explain it and then dreamworks and as soon as i saw dreamworks i was like okay i love every any and all things dreamworks they have never let me down so let's get into it Sorry, I had to go and check the main girl's name, Adora. It's very hard to remember. It's not like Jane or Nancy or something, but Adora is the main character, obviously, and she will be the one who becomes Shira. And her introduction, the way the story introduced it, was perfect. I'm gonna save some thoughts that I want to say for the Dragon Prince comparison that I have planned in my head, but for now, we get a wide shot of the world the planets and then from all this beautiful lush land we go into this dark apocalyptic steampunk i don't know why i keep using steampunk but in, but steampunk type environment then we see the main character we see her training we see her normal regimen and we can just see that okay she's military she's astute she's precise but she still has a little bit of spunk and fun within her 
and she's strong oh my god i just like uh, words were not even spoken at all for the first almost one minute and we already get a sense of the environment we're in the world we're in and it just sucks you in the animation i cannot praise the animation enough again gonna see what i have to say for that other video but as soon as i just saw the movement here's the thing the first episode i downloaded a very very poor quality of it the first episode was 360 pixels that is very bad especially for a high-end laptop but if 360 pixels can keep me invested but 720 for the dragon prince can't there is a problem like, i'm sorry this is not supposed to be a video bashing the dragon prince i'm sorry but i just cannot help make the comparison it's okay no more negativity let's just talk about shira and the princesses of power first off adora's design i love i just cannot take my eyes off her with her hair her ponytail she just looks interesting and then her best friend we we have Bo, we have glimmer oh my god i love those two so much i liked how glimmer was introduced you kind of get this like everybody's introduction in the first episode was so on point this is why i like cartoons that are 25 minutes long there's a lot of padding and runtime you can do a lot with it unlike let's say steven universe that has 10 minutes yes steven universe has done some amazing things within the 10 minutes time span that it has been given but most of the time when steven universe wants to do something very heavy it's either a two-parter a half hour special or a one hour special so there's only so much it can do with 10 minutes ketra is also a very well, I can't believe I'm going to say well-written villain, which is very rare because most of the time antagonists, they're just there. But we actually see Katra become the antagonist. Oh my god. So far, right now, I've watched only four episodes. But obviously, by the time this video comes out, I've finished watching the whole thing. I just cannot stop watching. The designs are good. I, I even felt attached to adora's squadron the guy who just cannot do anything to save his life the black girl and the lizard guy and also as soon as the show started and you see adora punching this poster of a princess in my head i'm like who could ever think of a princess as something bad yeah they're the rebels but they're princesses they're supposed to be good so initially you get the sense of yeah adora was raised in the wrong side some stormtrooper um the force awakens type shit i didn't i didn't watch star wars i was raised on star wars i only watched the force awakens i haven't even watched the last jedi so excuse me if i'm just horribly wrong but this just gave me the vibe of okay adora was raised on the stormtrooper side of things and she's really good she got promoted and how can i just explain this we got so much within the first 10 minutes i had already tweeted that this is gonna be in my top 10 cartoons list 2018 is a bloodbath for cartoons and i don't know what cartoon i'll put in my number one spot because god damn it there were some bangers this year so i don't want to spoil too much because i haven't even gone that far myself but from what i can see um this is gonna be i won't say an avatar type thing but they're gonna explore the world more which i don't know why i'm sad about that because i am more than happy with this story revolving around bright moon and adora adapted to that environment and seeing glimmer and both day-to-day -day life but with the one episode where they go outside and they explore things and we see the world and i'm like you know what i'm not even against it because i have been i have been scarred enough by shows that try to explore the world and it just fell flat because the world was uninteresting it was bland i'm not invested in any way oh god i'm still throwing shade at the dragon prince <laughs> i'm sorry okay so 
we didn't even get a grand once upon a time all the princesses lived in harmony type bullshit but i'm so invested we see adora trying to cheer up ketra when we see that ketra is kind of annoyed that adora got a promotion and she's trying to cheer her up they go out into the world how do you do storytelling without even explaining shit i don't know how these people do this i think it's the dreamworks side of things not the netflix side of things but they knocked it out of the park in every conceivable way bottom line is my initial thoughts with this show is that it is awesome it is amazing i have never been invested in a show so god dang quickly the i'm by episode two when i heard the theme song there's this part where this woman is just the high notes i feel a chill run up my spine that's how good this is it has the tvc seal of goddamn approval and i know there are a lot of um quote unquote straight dudes who watch my channel and are afraid of watching something so bright and colorful and so girly but that's the thing you either like this or hate it you're either the type of guy who likes this type of thing or hate it but there is enjoyment to be had in this show for the male audience for the people who have testosterone flowing through 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 them the fright zone might interest you because it has a lot of designs that might interest that type of demographic but Bo, oh my god i love him so much he is the best thing he's gonna be gay isn't he i have just never been i just have i love this cast of characters so much and everything happened so naturally there was no coincidence or luck behind it everything was believable how they came to be how they interacted most time when a cast of characters come together it's purely coincidental or it's like under any other circumstances these people would have never met but the way the story built it it was like sets of natural occurrences had to have happened for this thing to come into play because if adora had never touched the sword Bo and glimmer would have never gotten the signal to go there and then them meeting at the same time it's kind of like avatar when katara had that meltdown against her brother and she broke the big ice block that I think Ang was in was was Ang in it or was was it that the ice block fell and their boat got drifted to where Ang was one of the one of those two so it's kind of like that like okay this thing is a chance occurrence but a certain set of circumstances had to have happened or this chance occurrence would have never happened so yeah Anne could have been with any other group of people who had broken the iceberg but the people who did were the best people to have done it in that situation and the same thing with Adora. Glimmer and Bo were the perfect cast of people to have met her otherwise this whole thing would have never been possible I love this storytelling my writer the writer side of my brain is having well i can't use that word because i might have children watching but let's just say she's having a party and she's very happy because the writing is astronomically good in this series but i'm gonna shut up now this initial thoughts video has been too long if anybody has been on the fence or have been second guessing it please for the love of god watch it i am i am forcing jay to watch the first episode of this thing because he just has to he has no other choice you guys and to anybody who is having second thoughts or whatever please just watch the first episode for me for tvc first episode i promise you you have the tvc goddamn seal of approval you have my word watch the first episode if you don't like it you can quit without any investment whatsoever but by the end of the first episode i have a feeling you're gonna click to the second one that's just me but yeah thanks so much so much for looking to watch i i i i, I, I can't i can't with this show it's just too good but yeah thanks so much so much for looking to watch do not forget to like comment subscribe do all the bullshit that i haven't said in a while but with that being said this is tvc signing out <laughs>